Ever wondered what stuff you actually need to do a musical theatre course? Well look no further because today I'm going to be sharing all the gear and stuff that I had to buy to do my course. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. I'm Heidi. I create lots of videos on musical theatre, so if you want to see that, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. This is my first year going to musical theatre, so at the beginning of this year, I had to buy all of this equipment that I didn't realise that had to come out of my pocket to be able to even start doing this course. So I think it would have been very useful if there was a video out there that could just tell me all the stuff that I might need. And of course, every school will be different, but hopefully it will be able to give you some sort of guide to what you may need to buy. How this video is going to be kind of split up so that if you are doing just an acting course or you know your course is a bit different i'll first talk about all the stuff that you might need for your dancing section singing acting and then just some general stuff that i think would be very useful so let's just get started with the dancing stuff so the first part of the dancing section is the shoes now if you haven't done any dancing before this will be probably the most expensive part and you can find stuff online. I find eBay and Gumtree does have some dance stuff. But if you are going to be dancing 15 hours a week, plus doing it in the future for possible jobs, I do suggest getting something that is new and probably fits you as best as it can. So here I've got some chorus heels. These ones I got from Capizio for $175 and I recommend getting some good chorus heels, ones that have a good heel that you're comfortable with, um, especially if you're not used to dancing in heels, which is me. Um, something with a big a sturdier heel is quite recommended. And also the fact that dancing in heels is quite hard on your feet and so you want to make sure that you have the best shoe that won't ruin your foot. And after a three hour dance class in heels, you want to be able to walk home or walk the next day. This part isn't like, I, I'm not sure of the exact term, but like a split sole in terms of it can't really bend up or down that much. Depending on what you want it for, I feel like that is something that I would look for if I were to get another pair. Because when you are dancing, you want to be able to point your foot when it, you know, and make your line look good. And these ones, I'm just not really able to do that. But otherwise, I really like these. They're super comfortable. Next, ballet shoes. These ones I got from Energetics, and they're quite comfortable. Um, I like it because they have the two slips there to go over your foot. And also, once again, the split sole. That's quite normal for an adult shoe to have the split. Um, quite comfortable. It molds to your foot. These are the leather ones, so I really like those. Also, in terms of sizing, I don't know if it's useful to you, but I am normally like a size 9 foot. I'm like 173 centimeters tall, and I have size 6.5B for my shoes. Then these jazz shoes I also got from Energetics. They're quite comfortable as well, the leather ones. The only thing is, I don't know whether it's just because they might be too big or the particular style, but these ones are quite wrinkly. So I don't know if you can see that, but... When I have them on my foot as well, they're just extra wrinkly and I just don't quite the, like the look of that. But yeah, it could also be how I've stored them. And I have a size 8.5 in these dress shoes. Next you'll need is tap shoes. These ones I think actually were secondhand that we got off eBay many years ago because I did tap just in my free time. But these ones are from Block and I quite like them. They're quite comfortable. They fit my foot well. These ones are size 10. Um... Yeah, but once again, second hand, so that I probably got these cheaper. And that's where I find, if there's a particular shoe that you're happy to get second hand, go for it, because the money really does add up. Now to dance clothes. So the first one I have is Leotard. So this one I believe my sister got online, so it was much cheaper. A hard thing about getting online is you don't know whether it's actually going to fit you, and Leotard's... For me, at least, I want to feel comfortable in them. I, I found I spent a lot of time trying on different leotards to see if they fit me well because, like, everyone's proportions are different. It is good to have a couple different leotards, and my school, the uniform code is black, so I had to get a whole bunch of black ones. And they also specified, and this is what you can check on your school, 
they specified to have a low cut back one and then a normal leotard, you know, all these different types. So this is my um, backless one. Um, it's just like low cutting there and I quite like this one because like it's a bit different It's got like this mesh here that you can see and it kind of goes around there And then it kind of comes to the back as well as well in comparison to the other one This one has quite a high collar which I quite like and then the final leotard that I have and this one I ended up using for a performance as well, which is good why you should get some good leotards leotards you should get some good leotards that a little bit unique as well to help you stand out if you use them for auditions. This one I believe was on sale which is fantastic for $8 at Capizio and I loved it because it has this really interesting back to it as well as the long mesh sleeves. Then this little kind of overskirt for ballet I got online or my sister got this one online um, and it was cheap again. Um, this one I feel like is you don't need to get a new one because it's kind of one size fits all. If there's any place to save, it's probably with this skirt. For the jazz classes, it's generally recommended to wear some sort of like leggings. I have a black pair from Energetics. They're high waisted ones. They fit very well, but I do need to get a small size because from when I started this course, I my body did change a little bit, and so they and also they probably stretched, so they didn't fit me as well as I would like to. Just a bit baggy. But sorry, I don't have those to show you because. Someone accidentally picked them up at the studio and then they were sick for the next week so then I still didn't have them and now we're in lockdown so I still don't have them which is fine but that's why it probably is recommended to have multiple pairs of leggings. I have running leggings that I just used but maybe grabbing two pairs would be a good good suggestion. For crop tops I have two crop tops and these ones are quite short. I do want to get a crop top that goes a little bit lower on my abdomen Otherwise, these ones are quite comfortable and I like them. Uh, they have, this one has like a little cross at the back, which I really like having that extra detail. And then this one is a simple one from Energetics as well. That's just simple like that. This one I'm not as comfortable with just wearing as is. I probably put like a undie um, shirt or a tank top over top just for a little bit of extra coverage. Next are booty shorts. I have two pairs, both are high-waisted. This is from Energetics. These ones are like the high waist goes this much, which is kind of nice, um, but it is quite like short and I'm not as comfortable with that. So I would probably want ones that go a little bit further down the leg. But then I have these ones from Capizio. It has this little sparkle feature on it, which I think is really cute. And that goes on both sides of the legs. But these ones were on the sale rack, so I think it was like $4 and I was like, why would I pass that up? Then and another expense that also kind of adds up is all of your leggings and tights. I had to get a light coloured pair for ballet um, and I had one from previous. So there's like different kinds of colours. Some schools might be quite particular in which ones you might need, so make sure to have a look and just ask the people. Generally the people working at the different stores will know. Um, even on their database. Some schools are on their database and they have the uniform requirements which is so easy. Then I also have a black pair that I needed and then a, another pair that was more... what's the word? Not corrugated. It's got the holes basically. Which I also used for performances and stuff so getting a good pair that doesn't tear is also probably recommended. Now for our last kind of dance outfit kind of stuff, I do have these leggings that I quite like. These ones were $4 from Capizio, I got it off the sale rack and I quite like them. They have the little convertible like going over the foot thing. Um, very good for auditions. If you're doing mock auditions in your course or even going out for auditions, you want to be able to stand out. So having like some bright colored stuff or some different looking clothing, that is a very good option as well as having maybe like a different coloured crop top. This one is nice and flowery, so yeah. If you're really just wanting to buy the bare minimum, then of course that isn't necessary for this stage, I would say, but I would say to look into it in the future. And then my last one for dance, this is gonna be a long video. I have these little socks that I wear. Nobody else I see really wearing things like that. They just have like normal socks underneath their jazz shoes or ballet shoes but I quite like these because like they're obviously skin color they're just like the little slips 
you can buy these or you could even when you're getting fitted I just use those as well it collects my sweat instead of it going in my shoe so highly recommend that and as a result of all your dancing that you may be doing a roller like this would be really good and also maybe even a spiky one that can really get into those muscles would be fantastic and help you to be able to dance more. Particularly if you haven't really danced much, your muscles won't be used to it, so they'll probably get quite tight. With that, something like different solutions, I find this one is quite good. It's Ultra Pro Joint Muscle Pain Relief Cream. So this one, I think I just got it like Chemist Warehouse or something. That one's quite useful for something like $10. And then having baths is super helpful. This is some Epsom salts and lavender. It will be worth it for your body and your muscles to be able to keep going, to be able to last your whole musical theatre course. If you're feeling overwhelmed with all the stuff you may need to buy because it is a lot, don't be because you'll be able to find a way to be able to buy stuff secondhand, borrow from a friend. Don't let it be an obstacle to achieving your dream. Moving on now to the gear that you'll need for your acting classes. Now this as well will be different for everyone, but I find something a good start is to have an exercise book or something that you can write your notes in. I use this one for both my audition prep classes, my acting classes, really anything so that I have a place that I can consolidate all of my notes. I can look back in a couple years and go, hmm, what was that exercise that we did? I really liked it for when we learnt Shakespeare. I can look back and then be able to read what we did. Cheap $5 that you could get. I do also have this one that you might have seen before. I mentioned it in my video that helps you decide whether you should pursue acting as your full-time career. And this one is like a consolidation of all of my notes that I've done in my own time and then also having some like character stuff in there as well. Another requirement that you might have is getting some Shakespeare books. I'll be honest this one is from when I studied Romeo and Juliet at school. If you do have kind of like a Shakespeare element sometimes teachers do recommend that you buy your own copies of them to be able to you know collect and be able to write your notes in but once again you could just borrow it from the library or maybe your teacher might have them depending on the school. And then for acting, something that I've had to use already is having some theatre black clothes. So I have, you know, different tops that I could wear that are a bit more unique, that aren't just like a black t-shirt, but a black t-shirt would also work. And some nice black pants as well that you could use. And these ones are good for performances. Generally, you have to wear black clothing for your acting. Next part is singing. Now for this one, if you have a printer at home, that is super helpful. Otherwise, hopefully your school has a printer or a library near you. But I find I have been printing so much sheet music. I feel like I'm just constantly printing sheet music. And then with that, of course, some folders would be good. They don't have to be black necessarily. I just like that because it seems a bit more professional. But any could do. But as you can see, this is pretty much all of just the sheet music that I've done this year. And there is a lot in there, so having two would be good. I have one for my audition prep class that I bring in, and then another for all of my like big ensemble singing pieces that we do for performances, showcases, anything like that. Apart from those things, something that I find has been helpful is obviously a piano. It's been quite useful to kind of note bash some things. But if you don't have a piano, don't worry. You don't have to go out and buy one. There's lots of great online pianos that you can have. On the desktop, you can just search virtual piano and there's a great one there. Otherwise, there's some great apps that I use as well to be able to have on the go. And then another expense, because we do audition prep every three weeks, every three weeks I'm having to either buy or search if you can some good um, accompaniments or backing tracks online. Generally for auditions you're not going to have a full orchestral instrumental backing for you to sing your songs, it'll just be the pianist so it's highly recommended to be able to practice just with a pianist. If you can't get yourself in front of a pianist to do your practicing and record them playing your song then there's some really great resources online that you can buy those. But that is generally like $7 and then buying sheet music is like $6 each time you buy them. Another highly recommended thing is to have some good formal outfits that you can wear for auditions. And this is something that I didn't realize but 
you should be wearing something that's more presentable. Something like this possibly could be good because it's not a t-shirt and shorts. Something that'll help you stand out and present your best self. So whether you have to go out and buy some good outfits or just use what you have in your wardrobe. Okay, we're on the home stretch now. All the general stuff that I highly recommend, such as a good bag. This one I got from Capizio and it is so useful. I feel like you really want to invest in a good bag because you're going to use it every day and it's going to hold all of your dance stuff, your big puffy jackets that you bring in the morning. And it's also quite useful for me when I do performances as well. This particular bag is $65 from Capizio, but I love it because it has these back straps on there as well as these bags that you can hold it just as a handbag. It has a zipper on the outside here, a zipper here that you can hold some stuff. There is a compartment for your laptop with a little bit of cushioning there. And it even has some extra little mesh compartments on the inside to be able to hold some loose things. And a lot of space to be able to hold everything that I said before. Next, deodorant. I just highly recommend having that. You're going to sweat a lot. And I know it's simple, but you need to invest in a lot of deodorant. Talking about smell, another thing that I recommend is having these charcoal bags. And these just soak up all of the sweat, smell, any moisture that you have in your bag from your shoes, your clothing. So this I found is really good to be able to have my bag. It doesn't smell. So that is pretty remarkable. Maybe thanks to these charcoal bags. Highly recommend those. If you find that they are being less effective, you can just leave them out to dry and they'll be able to be reused. There we have it. All of the stuff that I use for my musical theatre course. I really hope it was helpful to you. If it was, I'd really appreciate if you'd give this video a like. If you'd like to see more from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if there's anything that you want to know or any questions you have about musical theatre course, put them in the comments down below and I might be able to make a video about it. I hope you're having a great day. I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>